Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. On this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we head to South Central Florida for tips on preventing trichomoniasis. Plus, what one young couple is doing to promote the beef industry in a variety of ways. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Oxner. Thanks for joining us. Topping this week's cattle industry news, for all of us who love beef, there's good news in the United States Department of Agriculture's recent update of the dietary guidelines for Americans. Every five years, the USDA updates the dietary guidelines. And the 2010 edition encourages those who want to include lean beef in their diet. In announcing the guidelines, U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack said to tackle obesity, Americans must focus on balancing calories in and calories out. He also noted that the guidelines are based on sound science. The science behind these guidelines is, is unquestioned. Uh, and certainly it, it's important for us to, to send a message to American families uh, that these guidelines are designed to provide them an opportunity for healthy uh, eating habits and healthy lifestyles. The dietary guidelines is largely a scientific process and it goes on for years in order to review the scientific evidence and so that these 13 expert members can make recommendations to the USDA about what should the American diet look like based on scientific evidence. And the beef checkoff research was part of that deliberation, the providing the checkoff research that showed that lean beef plays a role in helping Americans get the nutrients that their body needs, in showing that it does, is not associated with a cancer risk, in showing that Americans can eat lean beef and lower their cholesterol levels. This checkoff funded research was provided to the committee and was taken into consideration when they were making their scientific recommendations. Beef is part of the lean meats. and We didn't say avoid or delete, remove or eliminate. We actually say that lean beef, and lean meat, and poultry and fish fit very nicely into the dietary patterns. These foods provide a great sources of energy and good source of a lot of nutrients, including lean beef. Major finding from the dietary guidelines is that Americans need to eat more nutrient-rich foods. And they certainly recognize the role that lean meat is going to play in helping Americans meet those nutrient-rich foods. Lean beef, for example, provides 10 essential nutrients for only 150 calories. And in that way, it's a nutrient-rich food. The new dietary guidelines will be used by nutrition professionals, as well as by NCBA staff and the Beef Checkoff, to help lead people to healthy dietary choices, including lean beef. The Federation of State Beef Councils works to manage your beef checkoff dollars and to promote and market beef. Here to talk about some of the top priorities for this year is David Dick, Chairman of the Federation of State Beef Councils. Thanks so much for coming to the show. Glad to be here. Well, first of all, David, tell us just a little bit about yourself. A uh, cow-calf operation there just south of Sedalia, Missouri, home of the Missouri State Fair. Yep. Uh, we've been there, family, probably seven generations plus, so uh, have survived a lot of different things and uh, just kind of enjoy where we're at. And your involvement uh, with, with the Federation to this point? Well, I uh, actually started out on, a, like everybody does, as a Federation director, got involved uh, in the committee structure there through the Federation side of the joint committees at NCBA. Mm -hmm. Uh, got uh, elected to the operating committee and uh, wound up somehow by virtue of fate as uh, here I am chairman of the federation so well I wanted to ask you as chairman in 2011 what are some of your priorities well of course you know last year we passed the charter right here in uh, Denver at our winter meeting so there are a couple things that we need to kind of get done with that right off the bat the federation is always the extension you know of that state national partnerships uh, the state beef councils, of course, collect the dollar and then it divides there and the other half goes over to the Cattlemen's Beef Board. But there's a lot of programs that the states do internally in their own states. Plus there are those states like a, a Kansas or a Nebraska where there's a lot of, a lot of collection, but uh, not a lot of folks to uh, either advertise to or, or talk about the product to. So they move that either through the Federation or directly to another state to do other promotion activities. 
And tell us, why is the Federation of State Beef Council so important to the future of the, of the beef industry? Well, like I said, it's the, it's the basis, it's the key to that extension of that state national partnership. There's so many things we can do collectively if we pool that money to get up like into the Northeast, up there where 25% of the population of the country lives, but you know, there's probably only one or two percent of the, of the cattle. So we need to kind of be able to remind those folks that we've got a healthy product that uh, they need to be aware of either, either on their dinner plate or as a dietary option. Thank you for all the great work uh, you do in, in leading the organization and good luck as we look to 2011 and beyond. I appreciate that. For more information on the Federation of State Beef Councils or to become a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, give us a call at 1-866 USA Beef or visit us at beefusa.org. It's an international event addressing a global need for meat. The recent International Livestock Congress in Denver had many producers talking about the future. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Dave Russell has more. Technology was one of the buzzwords at the 2011 International Livestock Congress or ILC and even producers with years of experience are getting involved. I'll tell you one of the things that surprised me and intimidated me since I've come here is how many of our older seasoned ranchers are carrying iPads with them now. Absolutely amazed. I was in a meeting last night how many ranchers pulled out their iPads so their instant communication uh, with email and, and attachments and typing and, and so the communication is just really uh, accelerating. These students know this stuff. You know, I chat with people on a daily basis over the phone and it's amazing the number of folks that um, that are in their 60s and 70s and 80s that uh, clearly are into technology. So, in fact, some of those folks are, are the, the older folks that are in technology are the ones that sometimes are more challenging. In other words, they're the ones that really ask the good questions. And uh, so, yes, it, it's not just for the young folks because we see a lot of folks, obviously, that are that are in their latter years that uh, are very keenly interested in it. We can't ignore technology um, and, and we can't be threatened by it. Producers, cattle industry and I think in a lot of industries but specifically we see it in our industry are resistant to change. But we have to take a look at that and we have to be able to say these technologies enhance our production and, and to ignore them or to say that they won't work for us is simply to say you're not willing to change. Now associated with the National Western Stock Show, the International Congress has been around for 25 years with producers from around the world working together to prepare for the future. It's the synergy of the industry. If, if people can work together towards the common goals, when they do that, um, this synergy that's created is, is how the industry is going to move forward. So I think that's the real benefit of that. It's a bit of a brainstorming thing and, and you come and uh, see uh, other people with a little different perspective and uh, you go away saying, uh, I'm, I'm glad it was there and, and I've uh, learned some things. Some advice from the conference is basic. A changing world needs a changing livestock industry. Use existing systems. Um, take advantage of new technology. Um, use commerce to drive traceability. And, and use incentive systems, not just to purchase things, but to incent continued sustainable participation among producers and then build it logically. Don't have this concept that it's going to solve all of our issues. It's, be realistic about it and producers will engage when they understand that we're thinking logically. From the International Livestock Congress, I'm Dave Russell for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on the International Livestock Congress, log on to our website at cattlemen to cattlemen .org. Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. The sooner you know that you have this, this to deal with, the sooner you can take steps to minimize the economic impact. What beef producers need to know about a common cattle disease. Plus, a look at how the Young Producers Council is playing a vital role in the future of the beef industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Join the folks at Whitestone Farm in Aldi, Virginia for their annual Angus Bull Sale, Saturday, March 26th. This is the place for the finest in premium Angus genetics, offering 90 yearling Angus bulls and 30 open Angus heifers. And Whitestone bulls are pasture performance tested. We'd like to think that the quality that we have here is a culmination of 23 years of genetics that we've put together 
that backs these bulls out of some of the greatest cows in the breed. Beautiful Whitestone Farm is located just 20 miles west of Dulles Airport in Aldi, Virginia, and it's well worth the trip. This is where you'll find Angus genetics that pay, and with the right disposition, quality carcass traits, and more, Whitestone Angus Bulls will work for you. Our bulls are 100% uh, guaranteed, and you know here at Whitestone, we really pride ourselves in the customer service that we give our customers. To find out more and request a sale book, call 703-327-4863 or visit the website whitestonefarm.com. Whitestone Bulls don't cost, they pay. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Quality matters to me because I'm responsible for managing the natural resources under my care, providing clean water and healthy feed, and creating an environment that fosters new life. I care for mother cows and newborn calves, nurturing them through the beginning of the life cycle. The entire beef industry is relying on me to provide a quality product they can work with. This is the beginning of the American beef industry. I'm proud of what we'll do here today. Welcome back. Strong herd health programs are critical to the success of cow-calf producers across the country. And as all cattlemen know, fewer illnesses in the herd means better results. Cattlemen and cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter takes us to South Central Florida to explain why preventing a common sexually transmitted disease is vital to the herd's success and profitability. I was born in uh, Lake Wells. Um, my mother and all of my children were born here, probably three or four generations. I was brought up on a ranch environment and um, essentially or eventually went to vet school at Auburn. I came back to Lake Wells and opened up a practice with uh, my primary interest in the cow-calf segment. After opening his own veterinary practice, Dr. Robert Jukic's love for cattle led him to start his own cow-calf operation. Initially, I bought about 500 head of cows and uh, started an operation on about a 2,500-acre lease. And then five years ago, I acquired this lease with uh, approximately uh, 1,200 head of cows on it. After 35 years as a veterinarian and 10 years as a producer, Dr. Jukic knows what effect a common sexually transmitted cattle disease called trichomoniasis can have on a herd's reproductive performance. Trichomoniasis is a venereal disease that is transmitted primarily by the bull during the breeding act. A lot of producers were coming up with calving seasons that were prolonged, a lot of calves being born late in the season. They were seeing a lot of repeat breeders in their herd. It's an organism, a protozoal organism, called Tritrichomonas fetus. And typically, a uh, cow gets exposed, this organism amplifies in a reproductive tract, and the response to that amplification then is inflammation that results in abortion. Producers have to be aware of their herd's activity in order to identify the symptoms of trick before an outbreak occurs. Well, generally the first thing that a, that a rancher notices, and if he's really watching his breeding during his breeding season, he'll notice that the, the, that the breeding activity has declined, the bulls are laying around, not real busy, and all of a sudden they go back to work again. And that's because cows that were settled and it, you know their bodies told them that they're bred. Now they've aborted and they're coming back into heat. They need to be aware of prolonged calving seasons and late calving cows. A cow will clean herself to some degree after two or three heat cycles or two to four heat cycles. And then they will breed and carry a pregnancy. Dr. Jukic is all too familiar with the repercussions of a trick outbreak. A prolonged calving season is what tipped him off that he had a trick problem in his own herd. My first year uh, when I trick tested my bulls, I found no trick animals. Uh, the second year I tested uh, out of 75 head of bulls, I had five positives. 
And uh, it took me a couple of years of whole herd testing to, and vaccination to eliminate it. I uh, still have a bunch of late calving cows, but uh, we're trying to work out of it. The first year you get an exposure on a ranch, typically you don't see it clinically. But if you go into that next year with a big chunk of your bull battery infected, the second year is when you have the economic wreck. We'll return to Florida for more tips on preventing trichomoniasis when we come back. Like you, Barringer Ingelheim Vetmedica Incorporated knows the territory. With over 30 years experience, you can rest assured that when you work with us, we work for you. We have an extensive line of vaccines and parasite control products for beef cattle and offer professional support in the field. We're continually bringing you innovative animal health solutions to help you build the most profitable beef operation possible. Barringer Ingelheim, when it comes to your herd, we've got your back. Purina's wind and rain minerals are research tested and field proven to provide balanced mineral nutrition essential for cattle health, growth and reproduction. They're highly palatable so cattle consume what they need when they need it. And wind and rain mineral special formulation resists the elements so they won't blow out of the feeder and maintain their palatability even if they've been wet. Wind and rain cattle minerals from Purina Mills, building better cattle. Quality beef starts with quality forage. Fertilization of pastures now can help with improved quality and tonnage of late season forages. But often applied nitrogen fertilizer can be vulnerable to volatilization, making it inefficient in robbing your herd of important nutrients. Nutrisphere N, Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager, is proven to enhance forage tonnage and quality by protecting valuable nitrogen inputs from loss. Improve your forage management plan today at NutrisphereN.com. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Brian Baxter in South Central Florida, who's learning more about ways to prevent a trichomoniasis outbreak in your herd. The symptoms of trick aren't always apparent. While some infected cows don't show any symptoms of the protozoa, they can still spread it to other animals. These are known as carrier cows. Carrier cows are cattle that will maintain a pregnancy. They will not skip heat cycles. They'll breed, they'll become pregnant, and they will maintain pregnancy throughout, but any time in their life they're shedding the organism, so they serve as a source of reinfection in your herd. But again, it, it's, it's really hard to identify those animals because they're in heat, breeding, maintaining pregnancies, and bringing a calf to the pen every year. Because carrier cows don't show any visible signs of trick, that's one reason why testing is so important in managing the protozoa. And producers who choose to test their bulls can rest assured they are getting accurate results. When we do that one test in these herds, we're approximately 80, 80 to 90 percent uh, effective in you know picking up the trick organism. If we do two tests, uh, a week apart where approximately 95% of the animals are positive animals are identified and if we do three tests we're about 99%. Routine bull testing at the end of breeding season is really really important. Uh, you can identify the infection in the herd. The sooner you know that you have this, this to deal with, the sooner you can take steps to minimize the economic impact. Despite rumors that trick testing is harmful to the bulls, under the hands of a skilled professional, Dr. Jukic assures producers it's very safe. I do the prepucial scraping. Um, it's a simple test. It's easy to do. It's fast. Uh, there's no problems created by the test. We do not produce any trauma to the prepuce or uh, any reproductive organ of the bull when we do the test. If a bull tests positive for trichomoniasis, the protozoa can quickly cause a lot of financial damage, so it's important to take immediate action to minimize the loss. If you get positive tests on a bull, there is no treatment, so the, the place that bull needs to go is to slaughter. And that's one of the unfortunate things about trick. Primary financial problems that 
rancher's experience or the late calving cow calves are not uniform at sale and then selling that late calf at a time of the year where it's less valuable uh, the other thing too is carrying an open cow for a period of time when she's not bred. But testing alone isn't enough to prevent or clear a trick outbreak. Vaccination is also a very important part of protecting your herd. There's a couple of things that we do to protect our herd against trick. One is testing the bull, two is vaccination. I think those go side by side and uh, I don't think you can uh, eradicate or control the disease without either one of them. Testing alone would not have accomplished what we have accomplished now. You have to vaccinate and test. Beringer Ingelheim Vet Medica Incorporated has a vaccine called TrickGuard, which helps clear up an outbreak and helps protect cows from the full impact of the disease. We vaccinate the cow so that there's systemic antibody in her bloodstream. And if she gets an exposure, she can rapidly transition that antibody into the uterus to clean up the infection. If you have an infected herd, vaccinating the cows with TrickGuard according to label directions and give them at least 60 days to clean up the ones that were open and then come back with fresh bulls and rebreed. With more than three decades of experience, Dr. Jukic has learned the best way to prevent trick is to take steps to keep it from ever entering the herd. Testing bulls, segregating cows according to age, and vaccination are probably our three most important uh, processes in controlling trick in a herd. I would advise all producers to uh, consider testing. I think it's well worth the money spent. Reporting from G7 Ranch in Lake Wales, Florida, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information on trichomoniasis or trick guard, visit our website at cattlemen to cattlemen.org. We'll be right back. Comprehensive, practical, powerful. Now's the time to put the power of DNA to work in your herd with the comprehensive Igenity Profile. The inside information from Igenity can help you make more confident replacement heifer and herd sire selection decisions, add marketability to your feeder cattle, make faster genetic progress, and more. The best time to get started is when you're already working cattle during branding, weaning, or bull soundness exams. Get started today. Visit Igenity.com or call 1-877-IGENITY to put the power of DNA to work in your herd. I'm Kevin Oxter, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Check us out at cattlemen to cattlemen .org or on Facebook and Twitter. Preventing cattle pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. One, vaccinate your animals with Pilligard Pink Eye Tribute to provide pink eye fighting antibodies in the tears that bathe the eye. Broad spectrum protection that cross reacts with 103 different strains of pink eye causing bacteria. Two, stop the flies that spread pink eye bacteria throughout the herd. Apply double barrel VP ear tags and Ultra Boss Pour On for up to five months of face fly and horn fly control. Three, manage the environment to reduce damage to the animal's eye from seed heads, pollen, and UV light, irritants that increase the risk of pink eye infection. With the right tools, preventing pink eye is as easy as one, two, three. Welcome back. Cattlemen's College is always a popular event at the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brad Bulla has a closer look at one of this year's classes which offered valuable advice on how ranchers can communicate with consumers. Effective communication about cattle producers and beef production can go a long way in improving public perceptions of the beef industry. That idea was the focus of a session at Cattlemen's College called Building Relationships and Telling the Beef Story. The goal was to encourage producers to share the positive story of the beef industry. We're um, looking uh, to tell the story of how to tell the story. There's a lot of people that um, are, uh, you know, uh, they abound out there trying to tell about the negative uh, impacts of livestock to the land, to the nutrition uh, of the human body and, and those kinds of things. But we have a really positive story to tell. 
Well, that session focused on public perception and tours and ways that we can, as producers ourselves, address the public and ways to enhance their perspective of our industry. One key point presenters emphasized was that farmers and ranchers don't have to have professional training to effectively reach consumers. They said you can talk about your operation and the beef industry at the grocery store, the post office, or your local school. It's all about making a personal connection with people. And that was one of the main points of our last session, was that the rancher has the most ground to work with, with the consumer, because they're trusted. They're they're working for the consumer as long as we keep in mind that we think of them as we farm they'll think of us while they eat. You've got to do it because nobody else is doing it for us and uh, we've got to be um, you know outreaching to to people and, and let them know that you know we're what we do and that we try to do things right and uh, um, you know ask them questions that they have about the beef industry and find out you know their perception and and hopefully we can kind of um, you know, uh, educate them on what we're doing and maybe, uh, you know, educate them on some of the misconceptions they might have. The session was just one of 20 available to Cattlemen's College participants. All of the classes featured leading industry experts who shared the knowledge and resources needed to be successful in today's marketplace. They're really very educational and uh, you don't get a lot of chances to, to hear uh, people that have been through a lot of the experiences and you know people that are that are here um, you know have been through just about you know all aspects of the cattle business and and can talk about it and uh, it's it's just a really good educational experience. Cattlemen's College uh, works to educate cattle producers in a wide variety of aspects from uh, marketing and ways to enhance their profitability to like the session I was just in was more on addressing public concerns and educating the public as to the beef industry and things that we can do to maximize uh, public perception of what we do as an industry. Really the value is, is to these sessions is immeasurable. We need a, a fresh uh, perspective on some of the issues that are going on uh, in the industry and, and we need to uh, keep ourselves up to date on things such as estate planning, um, um, livestock nutrition, uh, human nutrition and um, things like how to tell your story. Hopefully attendees will be able to take that knowledge back to their operations and use it to help create a profitable future for themselves and the rest of the beef industry. Reporting from Denver, I'm Brad Bulla for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now next year's Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show will be held in Nashville, Tennessee, February 1st through the 4th. For more information, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Up next, we'll learn how one Virginia couple is setting an example for young producers in the beef industry. We'll be right back. You like the John Deere 568 round baler for everything it has. Now, you'll like it even more for what it doesn't. Get rid of the twine tie system and run a 568 with nothing but net. That's right, nothing but easy loading, fast wrapping, bale protecting, cover edge net wrap. Put one to work in your field. See your John Deere dealer today. Education, networking, opportunity, and fun. That's what you'll find at the 2012 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee. Get your ticket to ride with your fellow cattlemen and women in the country music capital of the world. You'll find cutting edge education, top of the line technology, and entertainment that can't be beat. Don't miss your ticket to ride to the Cattle Industry Annual Convention and Trade Show in Nashville, Tennessee, February 1st through the 4th, 2012. For more information, visit beefusa.org. Welcome back. With the total number of beef operations in the United States declining, the up-and-coming generation of cattle producers are more important than ever before. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Dave Russell has more from the recent Cattle Industry Annual Convention in Denver. In the beef cattle industry today, the average age for a producer is 58. 
While that kind of experience is tremendously valuable, the long-term future of a healthy cattle industry depends on young people getting and staying involved. That's why in 2008, NCBA formed the Young Producers Council, or YPC, a group that is gaining real momentum. We're in our third year. Um, it's really for young people ages 18 to 35, and get them a, a leg up on the industry and how to get involved and um, have our voice heard. It does allow us a chance to really stand up and say, look, this is a, we're the future. We're the next ones in line. And this is what we'd like to uh, do to accomplish that, uh, make that future brighter. You know, that's pretty cool for, for a group of young individuals that, that span the U.S. Uh, to be involved in a national organization. You've got a lot of different viewpoints and a lot of different experiences. And when you're able to all get together and discuss collectively how it affects you, it gives us a better, um, I guess, opportunity to um, do something very positive for the industry. It's a great social socialization tool. We get to meet people in our, in our same industry with our same interest. And better yet, we get to educate each other. I learned something about the cattle business from someone in Arizona, California, uh, New Mexico, downtown New York, which is pretty cool. You know, We don't get to do that while we're out in production agriculture on a, on a grand scale. The Young Producers Council held their annual meeting at the recent cattle industry convention in Denver. While there's value in socializing with other young people working in the cattle industry, YPC members also have the opportunity to take advantage of professional development, leadership training, and to impact the policy direction of NCBA. We have a seat on each policy committee, so um, we have actually a, a vote with the NCBA for young people. So we discuss those issues at our meetings, uh, decide how we feel about those issues, and then carry that vote uh, forward to, to the general NCBA meetings. So that's really a, a neat thing that I think we do and uh, really important for us too. Of course, with YPC membership open to those ages 18 to 35, social networking, including a Facebook page and a YPC blog, are powerful tools to share information and help grow the council. We're trying very hard to, to get out there in a way that's easy for them to communicate with us. So I would encourage them to go on our Facebook page, go on the YPC website. We have a cattle call blog that we have issues every day that, that young people talk about, things that are affecting them on their ranch. You know, we give advice to one another and it's, it's a fabulous start to um, a segment of NCBA that, that's never been done before. Most cattle producing families have a desire to pass their ranch or farm on to the next generation. In YPC, the Young Producers Council is a vital way to develop the next generation of cattle industry leaders. Reporting from Denver, I'm Dave Russell for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Here to talk with us more about the Young Producers Council and some of the events they've got coming up is Travis Hoffman, Live Cattle Marketing Chairman for the Young Producers Council. Thanks so much for coming to the show, Travis. Thank you, Kevin. Well, first of all, tell us just a little bit about yourself and uh, your, your role with YPC. Sure, Kevin. I grew up on a uh, diversified cattle, sheep, and grain operation in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, had the opportunity and, and currently work on staff at Colorado State University uh, and oversee the Colorado Beef Quality Assurance Program and, and, of course, get to work with our young people. And I have a tremendous amount of passion uh, for our young people in the industry and, additionally, uh, our beef cattle uh, supply chain. And so it just certainly worked nicely that uh, I could continue to become involved with our Young Producers Council, a group through NCBA, mm -hmm. uh, of which case uh, individuals 18 to 35 are able to collaborate together um, and work uh, towards some common goals. I personally am a part of a 12-member uh, board, uh, of which case I represent the Live Cattle Marketing uh, Committee, and uh, allows us to become involved in a lot more of the policy and, and kind of the approaches of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association at, for our individuals. Well, you do have a lot of passion for this industry and for the young people. I've seen that firsthand right here in Colorado. Tell us why it's so important, though, for young people to get involved in organizations like YPC. Thanks, uh, Kevin. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity be to be involved specifically in our, our red meat protein uh, globally. Mm. Um, it's a, an exciting opportunity. And, and what it truthfully takes is we realize uh, within our industry is, is more of our individuals that are aspiring to become leaders, uh, become integral parts of our beef su supply chain and our production system. And I think that we've got a great group of individuals. Uh, we have uh, over 240 individuals uh, with this program, uh, with the Young Producers Council, and their involvement is important because we can be able to have leadership, but most importantly, effective leadership. 
and we can get those individuals involved in policy mm -hmm. and helping to drive where we're going to go with our um, organization. And then also uh, education is an important part of our world. Uh, we help to provide uh, some Cattlemen's College functions uh, that meet with what we're looking at from media training and, and spokesperson development uh, to financing of how we can have succession. And then the last thing is that we're currently working on is kind of public relations mm -hmm. task force um, of young individuals within our industry. We think it's critical uh, that we're out there and being a voice for our industry and promoting uh, what we do on a regular basis. And so we have the, the new social media avenues right. um, to be able to be more involved in YPC. That's great. So for folks watching who might want to be involved, tell us again, what are the, the, the qualifications, if you will, for membership in YPC? Tell us a little bit more about when you meet and so forth. Great, thanks. Um, we meet on, uh, on both of the conventions that are aligned with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, the annual convention and then also the summer convention and we have uh, meetings there of this last year uh, we had about 80 people that were able to attend our meetings um, and it's for individuals 18 to 35 and we're also a little bit diversified because we realize that there are people in production agriculture uh, that are working uh, and, on ranching on a regular basis but there's also individuals in our allied industries as well and so from a professional development uh, those are maybe people that uh, are wanting to get home um, and, and get home and work on an operation, but at this point and stage in their career, uh, they found another opportunity that has helped them uh, to meet some goals. So those individuals that are 18 to 35, uh, we meet at the NCBA Summer and Annual Convention, and we certainly welcome everybody uh, to help join us as we build uh, to shape our industry uh, and where we're moving forward as a group. That's outstanding. Thank you all for, for everything you're doing to get young people involved. Thank you, I appreciate it. For more information on the Young Producers Council and other NCBA groups, check out our website at cattlemancattlemen.org. We'll be right back. You take pride in the beef you raise. Countless hours invested to assure a safe and wholesome calf crop. Why trust that calf crop to just anyone? Experience the new Dinklage difference with a long history and reputation for outstanding performance and cattle care. We use a combination of cutting edge technologies and data driven decision making to establish our place as leaders in the cattle feeding industry. Allow Dinklage to be a part of your team in the quest to maximize your profits with five locations to serve you in Wyoming, Nebraska and Colorado. For more information on the new Dinklage difference, Stop by one of our yards or visit us on the web at DinklageFeedyards.com. Draxon, clearly Cattlemen's number one choice to fight BRD. Here's why. Nothing is more depressing in a stalker business as the doctor and doctor. And you still have your chronics, you still have your death laws. And with Draxon, we just found out, that, especially with microplasts, you just had to be there to see the results. And the evidence backs up what most cattlemen already know. Draxon cuts chronics and mortalities by 70%. So talk to your veterinarian and check the online calculator at Draxon.com. You'll see. Nothing gives you more for your money when you're fighting BRD. Just a great antibiotic. Very, very effective. Don't let the price tag scare you. It's a no-brainer. You just use it. Do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Draxon has a pre-slaughter withdrawal time of 18 days. Please visit Draxon.com or call 1-888-DRAXON for more information. Welcome back. We all know ranching is a full-time job, but some producers enjoy double duty, working both on and off the farm. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter has more on how the owners of North Mountain Cattle Company in Churchville, Virginia, make it all work. A lot of people in agriculture, in my opinion, um, once, once you've kind of grown up in that atmosphere, it's very, it's very difficult to, to leave it. It's really truthfully a lifestyle and not a job. It's a frigid morning in Northern Virginia and Allison Wenther and her fiance Bobby Bagley are out early checking on cows and calves. Together they're building a successful purebred Angus operation that covers 400 acres in the beautiful Shenandoah Valley. Anyone can do this if your heart and your mind is in it. Um, this is, it's an attainable goal. 
it's some days you, you really want to throw in the towel. Uh, when the bank notes do and you, you're fighting drought, you know, you're thinking about having to pay the feed bills, it, but you usually give it a day or two and your, your attitude changes and, and it, you know it all works out. But you've got to stay with it and stay after it. Like many young couples in agriculture these days, Allison and Bobby both have jobs off the ranch. Get to the farm around seven. If there's no major catastrophes or anything that has to be addressed that day, then I'm usually off to work and uh, there from nine to six and come home and, and back to the farm. I feel very lucky that I can, I can do both. Um, obviously farming and my background is very important to me and I can continue to do that here and work a full-time job which is also very important to me and so many folks out there today have to do both in order to, to make things and, and to succeed in the long run um, and I'm very thankful that I get to do both in the cattle business which, which is uh, very unique in a lot of circumstances. Allison grew up on a row crop and cow-calf operation in Iowa, and these days she's balancing her own farm duties while representing the interests of America's cattlemen and women. My other full-time job is I uh, work for the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Uh, I've recently changed positions in the last few months, and uh, now I'm working on the policy side of things, um, specifically with with large companies, uh, Post Packer, and working with them on product council happenings throughout the course of the year. Allison believes it's important for women in agriculture to have a voice. I think young women in agriculture are a critical component to, to moving us forward as a beef industry and as a whole. Um, you know, we, we in the past have had such a, such a lucky lifestyle, so to say, living, living in farms and ranches across the country for so many years. And now you see young women in agriculture taking a new role, um, working into the, the business aspects. Allison's quite the strong marketing voice. She helps quite a bit. Uh, we bounce ideas off of each other all the time. Um, and with her experiences with, with other producers and whatnot, that helps too because just some of the feedback that I get, um, you know, it's, it, it opens ideas and, and gives you information from other sources that you wouldn't, obviously, wouldn't be readily available to you otherwise. Allison's career with NCBA gives her valuable information about trends in the beef industry. She combines her industry insight with her operation experience to help plan the North Mountain Cattle Company's business strategy. My experience in the retail and food service business um, with the National Cattlemen's Beef Association has been very beneficial for us here at North Mountain Cattle Company. Um, knowing what the consumers desire and want is, is definitely what we strive for on a daily basis. Um, we know to continue in this industry, we have to produce um, items that, that our consumers want to purchase. Oh, definitely, we will continue, both of us continue to be in agriculture, uh, specifically with the cattle business, on a personal and a, on a business note. Reporting from Churchville, Virginia, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Join Bobby and Allison as members of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. To do so, give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us at beefusa.org. It's an investment in the future of our industry. Stay with us. Our good friend Baxter Black is up next. Assuring beef quality begins with dedicated people such as Phoebe Bittler, a dairy producer, and Jim Warren, a cattle auction market owner. Both are winners of the Beef Checkoff funded National Beef Quality Assurance Award and both recognize the need for the entire industry to focus on beef quality. We've tried to put our best foot forward and try to see that um, the product that we send out of this country is the most wholesome, safest, best product that anybody could have anywhere and to be um, complimented for that effort is a, an amazing experience. It's all important and I think there's some really good protocols laid out in the uh, Beef Quality Assurance Program that will help producers to do the best job that they can do. Producers across the nation have embraced the BQA program because they're committed to producing the world's best beef. To find out how you can compete for the BQA National Awards, visit the website bqa.org. 
From California to Florida, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen covers the beef industry. Each week, join host Kevin Oxner as he interviews industry leaders about the topics that matter most to you. When we think about that impact in our industry, it starts with looking at that picture of beef demand. NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, a television show by cattlemen for cattlemen, Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on RFD-TV or anytime at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Turnover Ball has become the most trusted gooseneck hitch in the country. Why is that important? Because trust is not only hard to earn, it's hard to find. The Turnover Ball Gooseneck Hitch by B&W. Trusted. Modern veterinary medicine encourages specialization. After four years of pre-vet school and four years of veterinary school, then you add another two or three years of specialized learning more about less, it may be possible for a specialist to eventually know everything about nothing. But there are still veterinarians in states with only one area code that you could trust to spay your cat, fix your dog, replace your uterine prolapse in a cow, extract a crypt orchid from your horse, and yes, judge the pigeons at the county fair. This one's for you. Doc, while you're here... <laughs> Doc, I'm sorry I called so late, but you must be all through eating. I appreciate you coming out. Your truck sure took a beating on this gravel road, and I swear I'll get it graded. I know I promised last time, but all this mud delayed it. The cow's up in the pasture. I should have called you sooner, but after lunch I took a nap. What Mama calls a nooner. I read the mail and fed the dog and sat around and thought. And then I watched RFD TV. And Doc, I plumb forgot. Sorry about this busted chute. I tried to get a welder, but last time I used Baylor twine, and I'm pretty sure it held her. I'm glad you brought a flashlight. <laughs> this bulb's been out since May. I'll have it fixed next time I call you out this way. Water? You mean drinking water? <laughs> Well, there's some in that old barrel, but a rat drowned in there Tuesday, so I'd be a little careful. Oh, and I just remembered the kid's old Shetland pony got in a sack of barley, and now he's acting groany, and since you're here already, the dog ain't had his shots, the hog's got diarrhea, and I've been seeing the spots. If it's not too much to ask, would you use these pills I bought? They're cheaper at the co-op dock, and you charge more than you ought. Well, I thank y'all for coming, Doc. You've treated me all right. And I told the wife to call you first, especially late at night. And if you ever need a reference, I'll put you in my will. And about tonight's expenses, just put it on my bill. This is Baxter Black, DVM, from out there. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Ben Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a two by four rectangle tube frame. There's a one inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Ben Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute, or other equipment. Tough and practical. That's Big Ben Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Ben Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, 
built cattlemen tough. It's one of my favorite parts of the show each week. Let's take a moment to look at your farm and ranch pictures from across the country in this week's Legacy Photos. We love seeing your pictures. To submit your favorite picture, visit our website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll talk with the experts for tips on preventing bovine respiratory disease on stalker operations. Plus, a look at what one teacher is doing since winning the very first WD FAR scholarship and the week's news and market headlines. Thanks so much for joining us for this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll see you right back here next week on RFD TV.